Mental health, what a huge topic. It's a bit of a buzzword. It's something that we're becoming more and more aware of. We've seen high profile uh, celebrities complain of mental health in our own national sport, AFL. Uh, Buddy, Buddy Franklin missed many much of last season with uh, mental health concerns. Denny Frawley was obviously a huge shock to the football community when he uh, died and uh, that was tied to a lot of uh, mental health issues and even recently the tennis player Naomi Osaka you might have noticed this in the French Open she pulled out of Roland Garros because she didn't want to front up to her media uh, responsibilities and press conferences citing mental health issues and too much pressure. Uh, One of my favorite authors Jordan Peterson talks a lot about his own deep depression, anxiety issues that he wrestles with every day. And even in pop culture, stars like Britney Spears have watched her public demise and uh, falling apart mentally uh, and emotionally in her career and everything, citing mental health issues. In the Christian world, uh, we had a few high profile uh, Christian celebrities renounce their faith. Joshua Harris, the author of I Kiss Dating Goodbye, and Marty Simpson, the songwriter and worship leader in Hillsong, both became disillusioned with their faith and publicly on Instagram and online uh, declared that they're no longer believers and cited uh, mental health issues and wrestles as a reason for their uh, becoming out of faith or losing their faith. So so what is mental health? We, we hear about this. We hear about this a lot in the media. We hear about this uh, a lot in just day-to-day conversations. Well, mental health is to do with the... Uh, the the heart or to do with the emotions, what we feel, uh, then psychological, uh, what we think, and then how that rolls out the feelings and the thoughts into how we act towards others. So when we're healthy, uh, the feelings, the thoughts, and the actions are healthy, positive. They build ourselves and those around us up. When they're unhealthy, then the feelings can lead to dark places. Psychologically, we might not be thinking straight or thinking in a way that benefits us and the people around us. We tend to hurt ourselves uh, and hurt others. What causes mental health? Well, there's lots of things, things that create uh, stress. And lots of things in life create stress. There's good stresses and there's bad stresses, but uh, things like trauma and tragedy uh, specifically create a lot of stress, maybe big life changes, uh, physical injuries, emotional uh, hurts and pains, relationship breakdowns, these things can create problems. And when there's a few of them in a row, maybe there's a death in the family and a physical illness and um, some issues at work, maybe some injustice going on in the workplace, then this multiplier effect can really cause people to go downhill in this area of the thoughts, the thoughts, the feelings, and then the actions in their mental health and how they're how they're doing things, symptoms that can arise. I mean, we're all pretty aware of them now. Anxiety, stress, depression can result in moods and addictive behaviors. And there's different symptoms that come up to show that we're not doing okay. Um, We we might have a panic attack. That's a really obvious one. There's a a lack of motivation often comes. Um, People withdraw, especially men when they're not doing well. They don't probably sometimes uh, diagnose that they're struggling in this area emotionally, mentally, but they tend to withdraw. Uh, or maybe come out of themselves, but in a way that's that's angry and, and unhelpful. There's high highs and low lows emotionally, sleep issues, all kind of things can um, be, be, be symptoms or give us signs that not, something's not right. We're not healthy. We're not, we're not doing okay. And obviously unchecked, it can lead to, to, to major burnout, hitting walls, deep depression, um, deep breakdown in relationships, um, serious isolation, Uh, where people become independent, isolated, really really withdraw from life, from work, from the world, and and ultimately harming yourself uh, or others. The the, the impact from the lockdowns I want to touch on specifically has been huge in Australia. And we would have seen this in the the media, and it was even in our national budget recently, where the increase in mental health spending in Australia is just going up and up and up with every uh, federal budget and even many state Budgets at the moment, it's very difficult to, the, to get in to see a psychologist or a counsellor. There's a three, four month backlog of appointments because of COVID last year and people struggling with uh, stress and uh, anxiety and all kinds of issues that have come up. We've helped a lot of people here in our own church uh, with many, many issues and uh, tried to refer them to more professional help. That's why I know there's such a backlog everywhere of psychologists and counsellors. 
I want to ask you before I move on, just uh, if you're watching this live, you can put this in the, in the comments below. Uh, what are the mental health issues that you've observed? What have you seen in your friends, in your family, yourself, in society? What are the ones that have really uh, jumped up to you? And what do you think are the reasons for these? Why, why do people get into these situations? Why have you gotten situations where you, where you struggle with mental health? Now, what do we do about this? That's the big question. I had a quick look before I kind of jump into the scriptures and the Bible. I had a quick look online and the Australian government uh, gives, gives good recommendations, uh, good conventional wisdom about connection, people relationships, get outside, physical activity, uh, learn coping strategies uh, to make sure you're staying mentally healthy. Uh, the Beyond Blue website, uh, interestingly, uses the word try. It says try to be positive, try to get outside, uh, try to have a coffee with a friend, which is which I think is interesting because I think we have such a better technology from God, from heaven, found in the Word of God. What does the Bible say about mental health? Well, first and foremost, before I jump into a scripture or two, I want to tell you that God is not afraid uh, of our weak-willed hearts. Uh, he's not afraid of our fragile minds or our poor choices that we might make. God is not afraid of that. He's not wanting you to sweep that stuff under the carpet. He's not wanting you to pretend to be full of faith and pretend to be okay when you're not okay. People have genuine issues, genuine emotional needs, mental health issues, uh, problems in relationships tied to mental health, but they're harming themselves. I've dealt with hundreds of people over the, over the pastoring journey. So God's not about you sweeping it under the carpet or pretending things are okay. And he's not afraid of our weakness and our frailty as human beings. He created us. He knows how we work. The scripture I want to focus in on, you've probably already guessed the one, and it's where the Apostle Paul talks to Timothy, uh, who is mentoring and fathering in the faith. And he says to him in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Or maybe your version says, and of self control. And this is really the point I want to make today and the thing I want to share with you. This is the godly principle. Mental health begins in the spirit, begins deep down here in the spiritual area of our being, and it flows into our body, into our soul, and into our mind. So it starts in the spirit where the God speaks, where the word of God, where Jesus, where the Holy Ghost lives, where God resides on the inside of you. And then mental health coming from the spirit flows into the body, it brings healing to the body, it brings cleanliness to the emotions, to the mind, to the thoughts, to the feelings, and it gives us a roadmap. Christianity, God gives us a roadmap to therefore act in line with what we believe. The interesting thing with the natural conventional wisdom, the government websites, what you'll find going as to a psychologist is that they can expertly deal with the mind, they can deal with the emotion, they can deal with the physical, but often the spiritual is left unattended. The spiritual is not an area that, that they either believe in, uh, that is either maybe not respected or maybe just not understood. But Christianity dives into this deep part of who we are as human beings. God gives us the Holy Spirit and the Word of God says that the Holy Spirit is our counselor. He's the ultimate counselor who can help us through trials and tribulations. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of life, not the spirit of death, downcast uh, looks, depression is the spirit of life. The Holy Spirit points us to Jesus Christ to the Word of God, points us to things that will give us life, that will multiply life around us, encourages us with the fruit of the Spirit, which are not things of depression, um, anxiety, but things of love and peace and joy and self-control. Jesus died on the cross and shed His blood to wash you clean of your past hurts that may cause mental health, your difficulty in dealing with human relationships that may cause issues in your life, your even, even biological or mental health issues, history of, uh, of mental health issues in your family. Jesus died to bring healing to those areas. God knew that when He created us that He would need to bring healing through His Son, Jesus Christ. He is our rock. He is immovable. He is where we can put our faith. He is where we can put our hope. Matthew 6 talks about, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough care of its own. Put your faith in God. Put your, seek first the kingdom of God. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. He is immovable. He won't stress you out. Come to me, Jesus said, all who are heavy, who are laden, who are burdened, and I will give you, I will give you rest. 
So what should our first response be when anxiety comes, when trauma, tragedy comes across our life? What should our first response be? We know that there's many, many self-help books out there. There's coping strategies, there's psychologists. All these kinds of things are very valuable. I like reading this stuff. I find this stuff interesting. There's life coaching. I was only talking to a life coach a few weeks ago, receiving counseling, working through some personal issues. But what should be our first response, our first port of call, our first step? as Christians, as believers who have faith in God. Well, that should be to go to Jesus in the place of prayer and to come to the Word of God, the Word of the Bible, the Scriptures that will give us life and true life. This Scripture, Philippians 4 verse 6, hits the nail on the head. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation. You're going to have situations, you're going to have troubles, you're going to have stuff going on in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Present your request to God. My request of my difficulties at work, my family breakdown, my mental health issues, my lack of motivation, my sleep issues, my whatever's going on for you, my feelings of depression. Bring your prayers, your petitions, your concerns, your worries. Bring them in the place of prayer. Bring them to God. Rather than bring them to worry and anxiety and stress and talk about them and ruminate on things that are bothering us first, what's the first response? Bring them to God. Not read a self-help book. Open up the scriptures. Now, Christianity respects and understands the interconnectedness of the interconnectedness, sorry, of the human being. It doesn't, it doesn't say you don't have a mind, you don't have emotions, or you don't have struggles in life, or things aren't difficult. It doesn't say that. Now, Christianity embraces the challenge of life. It embraces the interconnected nature of human beings. It's a fascinating thing. Christianity doesn't skirt around the edges. It knows that when we have mental struggles, that might result in, in, in physical uh, symptoms. People often, their backs go. People have uh, odd, uh, mysterious pains in their body relate, related to emotional or mental things that are going on. Christianity understands that. God knows how we're created. That's why the command from Christ is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. It considers the mind, the emotions, the feelings, the body, and also the spirit. But when we come to God in the place of prayer, we understand that mental health and well-being and full health in all of us actually starts in the realm of the Spirit. It starts in the place of prayer. It starts with the Word of God. When people truly rely on prayer, rely on God, depression decreases. The, the, the likelihood of addiction or rash decisions that hurt yourself and others decreases. Anxiety decreases. There's opportunity for healing as the Word of God washes over your life. Mental health begins in the spirit, flows to the body, flows to the soul, flows to the mind. I want to encourage you with these three scriptures as I finish. These are three scriptures that I've chosen out that you can meditate on. In times of stress or anxiety, or when you feel the pressure of life coming upon you, you feel your breathing getting short, you feel like overwhelmed by things that are going on. Here's the word of God that can wash you, that can give you perspective, that can keep your eyes on God. The first is John 16, 33. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation or hardships, but take heart, I have overcome the world. You will overcome hardships because Jesus has overcome everything. He's already overcame it all, so you will overcome. Wow, can't you take heart in that? The second one, Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You are strong because God is with you. You're not strong because you got mentally tough, you got emotionally strong, you got your body in shape. No, you are strong because God is with you. Your strength comes from Him and from Him alone. The third one to meditate on is John chapter 1 and verse 5. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. You are a child of the light. And guess what? the light wins. Wherever the light shines, the light of Jesus Christ shines in your heart and all darkness and depression and dark spots and dark pathways, they're going to be exposed. They're going to be enlightened by the word of God and the truth of Jesus Christ. So take heart in that. 
Be, be strong because of who Jesus is. Be built up because of what the Word of God says. Be cleaned in the areas of your heart, your mind, your emotions, your body, your relationships, your life, your home, your marriage, because Jesus Christ shed His blood to wash you clean. My challenge for you, application point as we finish off, is take these three scriptures, meditate on them. Maybe even right now as we finish, maybe in the next 24 hours, meditate on these three scriptures and, and, and ask God, what are you specifically saying to me, Lord? What are you saying to me about my inner life, my, my mental health? What are you saying to me, God, through these three scriptures? What is the truth of God that comes from heaven that is going to help me as I'm journeying through this life? What is the word of God? What are you saying to me? in these three scriptures. Take some time, meditate on it. When I say meditate, I say take time, close your eyes, read over the scripture again and again and again. Pray over it, sit with it, let God speak into your heart about it. Write on it, journal on it, write whatever it comes to your heart. Let God speak to you in these three powerful scriptures that will dispel anxiety and stress and get your perspective right, get you clean in the mental health and focusing on God. I hope that helps you out. I hope we can continue to move forward and grow in Christ together. Bless you.